This morning, the government of Dominica will sign a contract with the architectural firm Marques and Marques Architectos of Puerto Rico in the amount of US one million three hundred and fifty five thousand one hundred and sixty dollars US or EC three million six hundred and eighty one thousand eight hundred and thirty four dollars and twenty cents for the design of our new national multi sports complex. The general scope of works for the architect's engagement will include preparation of conceptual designs, schematic designs, preparation of construction documents, assistance with the construction bidding process, construction supervision, and other professional services. The new sports complex will be designed to meet the standards mandated by the respective international sports federations and associations. It is expected that the design phase will be completed within a period of about four months. To give you a bit of background on the firm, Marques and Marques Architectos has over 50 years of architectural design and construction experience in Puerto Rico. Some of the major projects which they have designed include sports and recreational centers, hospital additions, and commercial and institutional facilities. This firm has extensive experience with local materials and methods of construction, which are most suitable for our tropical climate. Significant factors which are taken into consideration in their designs are the integration of natural cross ventilation, resilience to hurricanes, and ease of maintenance of the facility. You will concur that these factors will all be very relevant in designing our new national multi-sports complex. Once again, I bid you welcome. At this time, I would like to invite our Minister for Youth, Sports, Culture, and Constituency Empowerment, Honorable Justina Charles, to give some remarks. Let me say pleasant good morning to all of you. In our 2014 manifesto, page 46, the Dominican Labor Party made some pronouncements, specifically addressing the young people, sports enthusiasts, and the general public. We promised that during the year, the new term, we would construct an indoor sports facility at Stock Farm with the capacity to host regional and international games, thereby providing an enabling environment for, young, for youth engagement and development, positioning Dominica to host regional games. This initiative was taken in response to the increasing calls by sports men and women, particularly those from the basketball, netball, and volleyball fraternity. Dominica, being the nature isle that it is, often experiences sudden rainfall which results in interruption of planned sporting activities, particularly games played on hard courts, intensifying the calls and cries of our sportsmen and women with each passing downpour, triggering disappointments and frustration. In early 2015, the government of Dominica, having listened to the concerns of our sportsmen and women, began the journey of making the construction of this facility a reality. The Minister of Finance, through his diplomatic relationship, was able to secure funds to take us through the design and construction phases. Then came Tropical Storm Erica, which adversely affected the economic landscape of our country. We recall that government was forced to take many decisions in an effort to address the situations precipitated by Tropical Storm Erica. And among these was the, sudden, was the decision to put the construction of the indoor facility on hold as funds had to be diverted to the country's reconstruction efforts. The Honorable Prime Minister, however, gave the assurance 
that the indoor facility would be back on stream in 2017. Today, June 9th, we are here to fulfill our promise of delivery to our sports persons. Today's signing ceremony will formalize the official commencement of this long awaiting dream. The process was accelerated with the engagement of Max and Max Architectures firm early in 2017. Following a visit of a Dominican delegation to Puerto Rico in February 2017, a mission which gave the delegation a first-hand view of similar facilities designed by the Max and Max Architectos, and a subsequent visit to Dominica by Mr. Ma, the government was satisfied that all was in place to advance the project. Today we are here to sign the contract for the design stage of the project, following which strict timelines will be established and followed for the implementation of this project. The design of the complex will include the indoor facility, which will comprise three courts. Also expected to be part of the design are outdoor courts, two tennis courts, and a swimming pool. It is worthy to note that the Ministry of Sports, Youth, Culture, and Constituency Empowerment engaged a wide section of stakeholders, which included representatives from each of the court sports who will serve on the, who presently serve on the technical committee working group to bring to bear their knowledge of the requirements as per international standards. It is therefore fair to say that with the advent of this indoor facility, Dominica will be positioned to host regional and continental events. This is no doubt, this in no doubt, will afford us an opportunity to provide our youth with opportunities to improve their games and to raise their standards. The construction of the Windsor Park Stadium brought new light to bear on us as it relates to the important role of the state-of-the-art sports fa facility can play in developing the tourism potential of our country. This new facility will no doubt enhance our sports tourism potential, hence contributing in tangible ways to our national development. This Labour Party government has spent millions of dollars in the construction and improvement of sports facilities across the island. We can pride ourselves as the administration that have spent the most on the development of playing fields, hard courts, and more recently, the lighting of five of our playing fields. This clearly demonstrates government's interest and concern for the well-being of our citizens in creating avenues for socialization, for providing opportunities for our young people to be engaged in positive activities, for identifying and nurturing the talents of our sportsmen, and for providing opportunities for our sportsmen and women to develop to international standards. Having said that, Facilities alone cannot provide us with the outcome that we aspire to. There must be that intrinsic motivation, a positive attitude, willingness to embrace the opportunities not only by our players, but by all Dominicans. I wish to thank all those who have played a pivotal role in getting us thus far. Thanks to Max, Mr. Max, and his team for agreeing to work with us on this venture. Special thanks to our sportsmen and women for your patience and your tolerance. We look forward to a full implementation of this project. I thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Charles. And the minister mentioned that there will be both indoor and outdoor courts. And um, I just wanted to add that the outdoor courts for volleyball, netball, basketball, the tennis courts, and the swimming pool 
will be open to the public. So the general public in the vicinity of Stock Farm, Roseau, and um, also the college students will have access to the outdoor courts. And Vickers as well. Um, <laughs> and the, the entire country, <laughs> by extension, Prime Minister. And at this point, I'd like to invite the Honorable Prime Minister to give us some remarks. Uh, thank you very much. Let me first of all recognize uh, in our presence our Minister for Youth, Sports, Culture, and Constituency Empowerment, Honorable Justin Charles. My other cabinet colleagues were here. Uh, Mr. Bernardo Marquez from Representatives of Marquez and Marquez Architecture, Puerto Rico. The members of the Technical Committee, in particular, the Chairman, Mr. Sorrendo, who is also a former Minister for, for, for Sports and uh, somebody who has given his entire life to the development of sports in Dominica at, at, at all levels. Let me also recognize uh, the sports coordinator and the staff of the Ministry of Sports, the chairman of the Dominican Olympic Committee, Mr. Billy Doctorov, who I was told I had great influence <laughs> of having elected. <laughs> I mean, people, people blame me for all kinds of things these days, you know. <laughs> you know, you know you guys, guys go home and their lunch is not cooked, they blame me, you know. They, <laughs> They, they, they tell you this whole day watching scary on TV <laughs> and my food. I haven't cooked my food yet and so on. You know, um, but the truth is, I have not, I had not spoken to Billy Doctor in months and I haven't seen him in months up until today. And I do not even know who are the members of the Olympic Committee, you know. But I guess, um, you know, Mr. Wilson had to say what he had to say. Um, and of course, the representative of various sporting disciplines, representative of the media, ladies and gentlemen, Friends, all those of us listening via live coverage of this very simple and short but far-reaching and significant ceremony. We believe today is a great day for sports development in Dominica. Mm -hmm. And every sports enthusiast and every citizen of our country uh, should be grateful for that day. When you look at the development of sports in this country, this administration, which I have the the privilege to lead has been at the forefront of investing in sports development in Dominica. Whether it is through the trading of human resources, having people with the practical professional skills and knowledge to impart sporting techniques and physical education techniques to our population, or the infrastructure and also the facilitation of public servants to um, represent our country. When we came into office, that was a difficult thing for people to do. As a matter of fact, Billy Doctor will tell you that many times Gregor Mesa had to intervene to ensure that he could get time off to go and represent Dominica as an umpire. Because the system did not allow him to do that. And there were many people who won, who won the, the national teams, national teams. And they will be denied time off to represent their country. And we have been able to break down these walls and allow it for, to become part of the system, where once you're a national team, you automatically will be given time off without any um, um, consequences, uh, in particular uh, deductions from your monthly pay. We could speak to a number of infrastructural works we have done. It is under this administration that in the first time of our country's history that we have been able to host international matches. Not only for cricket, but for football. Mm -hmm. We had the Canadian national team fly directly from Canada on a 737 into, into Douglas Charles Airport <coughs> to play at the Windsor Park facility. It is we who transformed the Benjamins Park from a swamp to a facility that is hosting regional games. And in this year's budget, I can tell you some other things happening in this budget, you will see a significant sum of money allocated for the Geneva playing field to upgrade it to a level that can be used for, for, for hosting of proper international games. With the level of the playing field and drainage systems and improvement to the washrooms and the players' pavilion, those funds will be placed in this year's budget for this. 
We have also signed the contract, and we, the, uh, the contractor has ordered the, the material, the, the, the fixtures, for the covering of the Master Basketball Court. That was in this year, in the 2016-2017 budget, mm -hmm. and we have signed a contract, and we're now waiting for the shipment of these fixtures so that the Master Basketball Court can be properly covered with improvements to the washrooms and the amenities and the facilities so that when we have rain, which is a normal occurrence in Dominica, we can have basketball games. And now we're speaking about the indoor sports facility, which we believe will help motivate and encourage aspiring athletes to take their sports much more seriously than they're currently doing. Because we all know that over the last uh, two decades, three decades, there has been a revolution in people's ability to make a decent living out of sports. That sports is the highest paid profession now in the world. And no matter where you're from, you can make it to the, to the, to the highest level of your sporting discipline. But we recognize as a country that we need to have the facilities at the international level. And this is why we're constructing, we intend, we're moving towards the construction of this indoor sports facility, which will cater for basketball, volleyball, uh, netball. We have a swimming pool. We have tennis courts. And we also have some of the courts ex that will be out, outside so that we can have for day-to-day for -day um, playing. And this is going to be a significant investment in our young people and in sports development. And I can say to the country, as the Minister of Finance, I have set this money aside to build this facility. So we're not going to be looking for the money. We have the money to build the facility. And the entire sum, which will come from the Citizenship by Investment Program, and when we have elements in our country who collude with external people who do not even know where Dominica is and who have never been to Dominica, who have no interest in Dominica's well-being, to seek to undermine and to destroy a major source of non-tax revenue for our country. It is something that every single citizen, irrespective of who you are, we need to frown upon. Because this facility will cost us in excess of 40 million EC dollars. Tell me, how many of us would suggest to the government that we should go to the National Bank to get a loan of 40 million dollars to build a sports facility? And in a world where it has become so uncertain, where countries are now being more nationalist in spirit and in practice, which means that access to grants is dwindling. And I'm not criticizing any country for being nationalistic in its spirit, because the government is first elected to take care of its own people. But that's the reality which we are, we are faced with. And then we have people who are bent on seeking to derail it. And you're seeing this happening, where there is a reprinting of, of articles that were written six months ago, seven months ago, about the CBI. With people who have no children here, who have no investments in Dominica, who have not been to Dominica. And we have people in Dominica are colluding with them, working with them in tandem to destroy this. And as I've said before in many places, I have not met one Dominican, including myself, who would like to pay more taxes. As a matter of fact, I keep saying to the government, you're taxing me too much. <laughs> but yet we want all kinds of developments in the country. And the source of funds that we can help, use to help make Dominica a better place a place that can give our young people, our children, hope for a brighter future. We are prepared, we are working, the elements within our country are working towards destroying this. So I'm saying to the young people that this investment is for you. 
it is for you. It is what people like Mr. Sorrento and others have been yearning for. And I see um, Mr. Joseph Thomas in, 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 the, in the part of the media corps. And the scores of young people whom I've met in my interactions across the country who have the raw talent, who are utilizing or less than adequate facilities to improve their abilities. And with the construction of this facility, we know we, we, ha we are very confident that it will take sports and sports development to the next level in Dominica. We have selected the firm from Puerto Rico to assist in the architectural designs of this facility. Because as the minister indicated, we visited, a delegation of Dominica visited Puerto Rico, and we've seen the work that they have done, the facilities that they've used. And some of the things which attracted us was the fact that if you're going to build a facility like that, there is going to be a high maintenance cost. And therefore, the design of this facility must bear that in mind. And issues of energy cost, the cost of, 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 of light bill, or what, what we call light bill in Dominica, electricity bills. You have to get the consideration. If you're going to be doing this, do you want to have a system, a, a facility build that you have to run it on, 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 on AC or use the natural breeze to cool it down? So the, the, the type of construction will be, which we will be uh, utilizing would allow for the building to use less electricity to cool itself and will use less monies to maintain it over a period of time. And there are a number of other reasons why we have utilized them. But what I want to say to the people of Dominica and to the contractors out there, I want you to put your house in order. Because what I would like to see and what the government has decided we would like to see is for local people to build it. So while the Puerto Rican firm will be designing it for us, I want for Dominicans to build it. And so you have some months now to put yourself together. And the probably thing is that you don't have to do it only by yourself as a contractor. Why don't you join forces with other contractors with different skill sets and create a consortium of knowledge and expertise and to bid for that particular project? So I would like for Dominicans to prepare ourselves to build it um, so that we are we, we, part of the whole process. So this is the intention. There. So they will be providing us with management and supervision services and architectural services. But Dominicans will be engaged to, to, to build it. Um, it may be a situation where we may break up the, the various aspects of the work. So we give somebody outdoor facility, outdoor um, tennis courts to build, the person in the bigger facility, the main facility, and the, and the swimming pool. The original concept which we had for this indoor sporting facility did not have in it a swimming pool. <laughs> did not have it a swimming pool. But in interacting with the sporting fraternity in Dominica and consulting others, we felt that if we're going to build this facility, which might be the only opportunity which we may have, because we've waited for many years to have this, let us do it and do it once and for all. So we have included in this uh, indoor sports facility a swimming pool that will be available to every Dominican who is an aspiring swimmer um, in the country. So, so because as it is now, for anybody who would like to learn to swim or who would want to be part of a swimming um, um, program, would have to do it at a private swimming pool in Dominica. And I feel that is, un that is not, that is not um, acceptable. In the second decade of the 21st century, the state, we, must, we must have a facility that we must go, a public facility where everybody is welcome and you can make use of the facility. I mean, I would like to play tennis every day, but there are no tennis courts in Dominica to really play. They wanted to private ones, you know, because I prefer the non-contact sport because, you know, you play a little basketball fellas, they want to burst them off and so on. You know? <laughs> or, you, or you play hardball cricket, they want to bounce you, ask this man. So I, I avoid this thing, maybe. You know, I, you know, we're playing a little cricket at DBS. Uh, you know, Chris Matthew taking the boundary from the, uh, his stance from the boundary, <laughs> coming out after me with a, with a, with a, with a hard ball and so I said, but I mean, you guys invited me to a little fat match. 
<laughs> and this guy's taking things seriously. So uh, I'm really playing softball cricket and so on. But so seriously, you know, this is a major investment. And I am challenging the DOC and the new president and new executive to get on board. Because I would not want for government to be managing these facilities. This is not being built for the government. It's being built for the young people and the people of this country. And we would like to engage the DOC to see whether it will be interested in managing this facility on behalf of the people of Dominica. You understand? So that there is proper maintenance of it, regular maintenance of, of, of this building. Because the problem we have in Dominica, that when we build something, unless it doesn't fall down on its face, we're not maintaining it. We're not fixing it. And, I, and we have to move away from this. Um, we have to move away from this. So we, we will challenge the DOC as the umbrella organization to see whether they'll be prepared to manage the facility on behalf of the people of Dominica. The cabinet has also taken a decision to acquire some lands in Warner belonging to the Dominica Social Security. And the intention of this acquisition is to build the synthetic track for, athlet, for, for, for athletics. So that's another project that we will take on but we cannot take on both of them at the same time. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, we will be seeking to have designs done and costings done. So if we get the monies at a particular time, we'll be in a position to move ahead with the construction of the synthetic track up at Warner um, for the athletes in Dominica. So there are a number of, le of levels that we, we're seeking to do um, to improve the facilities of sports and to take sports and sports development um, to the next level. I want to thank the minister for her leadership in, in this, the, the ministerial leadership for this. Uh, she herself went to, to Puerto Rico to visit the, the facility to, to, to have practical understanding of it. I also want to thank the permanent secretary for her administrative leadership in this. I want to thank also publicly uh, Ms. Afflinesti of the Attorney General's office who was very instrumental in reviewing the, the the legal um, contract and and um, and I, I read some of the comments and they were very very profound and, and very helpful in getting us to have a, a, a contract that that can stand the test of scrutiny. Also, Mr. Mr. Sorendo and the members of the of the committee, because what we have done is that we have brought in people from the various disciplines to be part of a committee that will oversee every aspect of the development of this indoor sports facility. And Mr. Sorendo was part of the delegation uh, to Puerto Rico to visit the various um, facilities and to provide some guidance on, 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 on this. And I also want to thank the sports coordinator um, for, for his efforts and his, and his leadership, the Minister of Finance and the staff, the Finance Secretary for facilitating the, the, the contract so we can have the contract signed here today. So we, I'm very excited of this. Uh, it's a project that we're very committed to. We look forward to uh, a, a timely delivery of the of the architectural designs. And um, I would ask our, um, the, the, the gentleman here, Mr. Bernardo, to, if they could work night and day <laughs> to, to, to have it to us so that we can. And the idea is that once we get to a point where we have the designs, we will have a public engagement of athletes and administrators of sports and sporting organizations so you too can also at that level give your comments and feedback on the designs, you know, and, and where, where you think it can be improved, what can be done and so forth. So that I want it to be a participatory process that everybody, every stakeholder, everybody who has an interest in this will have an opportunity to, to view it and to, to be part of the process of making suggestions and recommendations. Because over time, we've gotten text messages from people what it should include, what it should not include, suggestions. So and we have taken, we've, we've, we've taken all of those suggestions on board in, um, and, and ensuring that it, they're reflected in, in, the, in, the, um, in the designs and the design brief which, are, which we have provided to the um, architectural firm. So today's a great day. I'm, I'm very excited for, the, for this day, for the, for the young people of Dominica. And my hope, my hope and prayer because you see, sometimes I go to villages and communities, and people tell me, you know, scary if you we want to play in field, we want to fix the playing field, we want lights. Mm -hmm. And then I go back and 
we make the funds available to improve his playing fields and to put lights or to build the basketball courts. And then I go back there after it has been constructed and we've been using it for some months. And, you know, it's, it, the basketball courts are littered with plastics and tarot from cups and bottles. You know, the playing fields are, are, are overgrown with grass. People, the people are not maintaining it. You know, um, the light fixtures are broken. They are vandalized. So I would like for us in this country to treat these investments as if individually we went to the bank and took a loan to build it. That's how we have to treat it because it is ours. And when we destroy it, we are holding back sports development because we have to go back to the repairs to a facility instead of moving forward to build a new one for another community. So we have to make use of it. If we spend all this money putting, putting lights in the playing field, we have to make use of it. You know, make use of it. If we do not make use of it, then it will be an investment that's wasted. And then when we have it, then we ask for something else. We keep shifting the goalposts. We ask for something, you get it, and we forget about what we ask for, we ask for something else. But today we are talking about the, the indoor sports facility. I'm very excited for this, for this day. And the government is fully committed to it, fully committed to it. And I, as I said to you that we're not going to be raising the money. As the minister indicated, we had identified a source of funds of $5 million, so it was, would not have been enough then. But to show you that our seriousness to this, we had identified these funds from the government of Mexico. Because Erica came about, um, we had to divert the funds to the resettlement of the people of Pedro and Environ. But the, we felt in the government and within the Labour Party that this sporting facility is too important to youth development and sports development for us to continue to defer it. And so we have taken a deliberate decision uh, to bring us back to the fore of priority um, so that we can very soon from now benefit from it. We can host international regional tournaments here in Dominica and not always have to go out uh, um, to, to play our home games. Uh, we, we play our home games here and host tournaments here in Dominica. But 40 plus million dollars, many of us could speak to a, a thousand things we could do in Dominica with that money. You know? Uh, so I do hope that people appreciate the, the, the extra efforts that we put into this. We may sometimes make this thing look very simple, but running this country is not a simple task. It's a very difficult task because things are very costly to be done in this country because of our terrain, you know, and, and, and almost every material we need, we have to import it. So we have imported inflation and, and so forth. And, and these things are not, are not, very, are not very, very simple to do. But as I said, we're committed to this. It's gonna cost a huge sum of money. We have 1,000 plus things we could do this money, but youth development is important to us. Sports development is critical to us, and we're committed to this. And I'm saying to all the associations, all the sporting organizations, we need to all work together. We need to improve the, the management of these associations. Uh, you know, people take out of context my, my concern. Um, but I should not only be hearing from you when you want money to go overseas, you know? I want to hear from you and telling me that, look, we're organizing some trading programs for some youths in, in Dubla. I want to hear you that you have an activity at Layo Park, in, uh, a league that will be running for six months, and you need sponsorship. You know, we have to have more activities, and we cannot rely solely on the sports division to put those activities together. You know, because at the end of the day, it is your associations which select the national team, and some of you don't consult the sports coordinator in selecting the national team. He hears it just like everybody else on, on the radio. Uh, but all of the programs are run by him by, and his office and his ministry. So we have to engage each other. We, we, have, we may have different views, but recognizing that this is our country. And the more we work together, the more we can do for our people. And all of us would like to see a more prosperous and just Dominica. But the question is, what are you prepared to do towards it? And I will reiterate it to the, to the new executive that the DOC should not only see itself as going to Olympic Games. It has to see itself as an umbrella organization charged with the responsibility of developing sports and developing sportsmen and sportswomen and sports children. 
and I don't see why people want to take this comments out of context. Because there is, has been a complaint by everybody about this. So I'm hoping that we can have a new dispensation, a new attitude towards this. And to say that the government's doors have always been open, and it is open still to engage in yourselves as to what, what you can do, what we need to do to develop sports in Dominica. Because we do not have all of the answers within the government. We do not have all the resources within the government. But if we can consolidate our resources, and, and um, we can do that. So if, you, if you're the president of the Handball Association, you have to have handball tournaments in Dominica. It cannot be purely theoretical. Where are the handball tournaments we have in Dominica? So that um, you know, we can get the young people to be part of the tournament and the training. So those are going to set up all of the sporting organization. And then we, there's nothing tangible on the ground to see. So I want to know how many handball people we have playing. How many hand people are playing handball in Dominica? You know, where, where, where the groups, where the organizations on the ground. So if people want to question and say, well, what my involvement in this and that, the talk will bring talk, you know? But I'm happy to be here. Um, Joseph Thomas is putting on to his part of the handball tournament and so forth. Uh, but I really want to commend you and thank you, uh, Mr. Bernardo from, from Marquez and, and the PS and Minister and all the people in the Ministry of Sports and the Sports Division. Um, let, us, let us forge ahead. Um, there's a full commitment by the government, so and commitment to the resources. Land has been identified. We will move very soon to to clear the land of the of the old structures over there, so that um, we, we we move apace. And what what's going to be done? I have said to the Minister of Sports that we will appoint somebody to specifically oversee this project, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis to to ensure that we, we get the the, the, the best um, of of the facility. Thank you, and may God bless us. Thank you very much, Honorable Prime Minister. At this time, we will have the signing of the contracts by myself and Mr. Bernardo Marquez. Thank you.